Welcome. This is the Discovering the Blue Hour author writing podcast. On today's episode, we will talk about how I chose character names and exploring backstory. So stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. This is Jasenia Cheyenne, and you're listening to the Discovering the Blue Hour podcast. This is an author writing podcast where every week I will be talking about topics pertaining to my work in progress book, During the Blue Hour. So if you like learning about world building, character backstories, and POV, this is the place to listen to them. I talked about and discussed my journey through the first draft. This week, I want to discuss how I chose my characters' names and explore a little bit about about their backstory. But this is only part one, so there's still going to be a lot to discuss over a span of a couple of episodes. When I first came up with this main character, um, she went through many uh, versions of names. And choosing a name is the hardest when coming up with a, a novel book character or any kind of character from a screenplay. And I feel like when you when you cut when you choose a character name you should heavily research it um don't choose a generic name because names are important so okay so my original character's name was asandra um in the pre-draft um in my screenplay and i uh, changed it and then i went from caitlin and all names and i was like no it has to mean something and so uh this second draft that I'm doing right now, since I've already done my first draft, the first draft was a name, was a Native American name, I think, and I changed it, and and now it what now it's Serena. So Serena, her powers, well, she, her name connects to the powers that she has, and then as you know, Serena, Serena's name means yeah, it's a it's a Greek origin. It means enchanter. So basically my character's name is her power and it is pretty cool how she's an enchanter. So this this is a different spin I put on the werewolf mythology as well. These werewolves have more power than most werewolves that you have ever seen in other shows or novels. So they will they will have these extraordinary powers rather than just speed, agility, and perception my werewolves they're gonna they're gonna have more and they're each each of their names connect with their powers so when i chose my main character serena i felt like that was her name like i felt okay because there was this there was a scene in the first draft that i wrote toward the end of the book right and it's a pretty cool scene really. but she basically uh, put them like like turn almost turned them into stone like the person that was after her she she didn't know how to do her powers but she like as she was turning into the werewolf she t- turned them into stone froze them into place yeah so it was re- pretty hard coming up with this name and i feel like everybody should do their research with their character names characters characters have to mean something for the writer and we have to fill the character. Okay, well, you know, as I told you a little bit about Serena, I originally wrote five main characters in the pre-draft of the 20, 20 minute screenplay. And at this time, at that time, like, like, like I said, the main character's name was Asandra. Um, and of course, like I, of course, now is known as Serena. Uh, I had her mother, Renee, her little sister, whose name I don't remember, the next door neighbor, babysitter, and Asandra's werewolf love interest, Caleb, along with the the villain, her uncle Brennan. Within five in the um, in the pre draw, I only kept Caleb's name and the mother's name, Renee, and everybody else's name I changed. And like I told you before. It is really hard coming up with names. I wanted these names fleshed out. I wanted them to mean something to even even the smallest character. So when I started the 
um, the novella, writing the novella uh, about Serena's ancestors, I just started like, okay, writing characters. I was like, okay, I want this character. And most of them are wolves. Uh, most of them are the ancestor wolves of Serena. And they're and in the first draft, they will in well in the second draft in the main book, they will be mentioned but not seen. Uh, most of them are deceased. They'll be like like in a family. And so I made a family tree. I connected every single character to a, the hundred characters to this main character, Serena. And it took me over. It took me like maybe over months to do that. And it was really, really hard to just sit down there and concentrate on each character, even if I'm not going to use the characters, because most of those characters, of course, 100 characters, I'm not going to use, you know, but I wanted to see, like, I wanted to pinpoint, like, how everybody is connected, how every storyline goes back and connects back to Serena. And it was really hard. Well, like, and then some of them were villains, some of them were humans. Most of it, like, so it was between humans and, and werewolves. So it was, yeah, some of them were humans, hunters that were connected back to Serena in some way. Not all of them were her relatives, the hunter sides, but most of the werewolf sides were her relatives or they were relatives to members of her current pack that is in the current story. And it, they were like ancestors to them. So yes, I and it, and it took a long time. Like I said, it took like six months. Wow. So her uncle Brennan, I cut his character out completely. And when I cut his character out, I was like, okay. So he kind of comes back in like a re, like reiteration in the novel, but he's another character. So I basically... Uh, cut his character and changed them totally into a whole nother character that's kind of really Serena, but it's like I said, he's a would be a distant ancestor, who who actually like you don't know that that person is her ancestor until like maybe you never know. So, but only I know. That's my notes that I wrote that he she he's. He's the ancestor, but nobody in the book knows. Not even the main character knows that 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 guy is related to her. But he's a villain, and he and you know. But in the first in my, in my drafts, you don't even know he's a villain. But that's like a reiteration of him, and I don't really specify. Oh, you know, he's he's coming after them. So use parts of him, and then I I change the character completely. So who the, the main person that's after her that sets the story in motion is her ancestor, Akala. And I originally, Akala is the villain, the big bad of the story. And I originally spent like two months on just her character profile and her character backstory. And it took long because it's like she's, she's there from the very beginning. And she's the type of person that that's just pure evil. Love is her downfall and her is what makes her do what she what she's doing. She's killed everybody. She's the type of person that she, you she's going to use you for her own purpose. She's she has a motive. She 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 has one goal and that's to get back what she lost. She's a smart she's a smart calculative woman. And she's very, like, she plans. So that's the type of person that Kyle is. And you don't, from this, you don't want to meet her. She was never wronged. She's doing, because she lost her love. She, I mean, because, I mean, she does want to achieve happiness. I could say that. But is there evilness within happiness? There can be a type of evilness within happiness. Then if you crave it so to a certain, if you, if you crave it, so much where it makes you obsessed with happiness that's how i see it i i break down every little instance to try to connect dots to my characters i don't know if other writers do that but that's how i that's how i envision each step of my character and try to envision their goal is to try to break down does obsession leave 
lead to happiness? Does evilness lead to obsession? Like, or vice versa, obsession lead to evilness, vice versa. Something has to lead, you know, like, to the character. So they, I mean, so their character growth, so character growth can build, you know? She will never be redeemable, I don't think, unless I somehow, at the, like, at the end, try, like, of writing my final draft, I'll be like, okay, fine, I'll redeem her. But would you want that as a reader? Or you have to kill your darlings, no matter how much you, even if they're evil characters, you know, I feel like maybe if the story needs, you have to kill. Like there was this, there's this character in the, in the first book in my, um, during the blue hour, who is the main villain of the book, him in the, the, well, the mayor of the town, they're the main villains in this particular book of the during the blue hour so i'm i'm going like in my like I'm, well, well in the first draft i kind of i did kill him that's the first draft but i'm going in between whether or not i should kill him or keep him alive because like i like him like he he is i feel like he could be redeemable be, but he did so much um chaos chaotic shit in like in the past and those two in the other worlds that that he lived in that i'm like okay just just praying just you know just hoping that if something good happens oh his his life is going to change you know i don't think he can be re i still don't think he could be redeemable like when he was a wolf because this this character this villain was a wolf when he was a wolf he he didn't he stepped on anybody's toes to get in the hierarchy of of becoming alpha but he never became an alpha but he he killed he he hunted when he was he wasn't supposed to hunt and did all kinds of shit he was supposed to do and then when he became a werewolf he he still killed he didn't care and all and then he fell in love with the other villain and he still killed he he but he did it all for her but at the end he 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 is like oh like i i realized that she's never gonna love me so but at that point at that certain point in time he's he can't be redeemable because he already did all his shit like all that stuff horrible stuff that, that he doesn't have no hum humanity and, it, and that's what it all comes down to, that he does feel love, but towards the villain, but knowing that she can't ever love him. For me, as a writer, I feel like that's reasonable. I don't know. And I think the reason why the other villain that's going to be in the first, the first book, the reason why I'm thinking about going back and forth in my head to try to redeem him is because, and this is what we're going to talk about in another episode, POV, is like maybe as I'm putting him in, I'm giving him his own POV, but I will also be giving a collar her own POV. But, you know, and that's another question that I guess many writers are faced with is with the POV situation is that if you, you're you giving the the characters their own POV, is the reader going to sympathize more with that particular character if you're trying to write them off as being the bad the you know the antagonist of the story like do you want the readers is how i guess how you convey them you know but i for me i want the readers to do both i guess i'm not sure at this point so in in the novella i'm gonna spill some things a little bit for our listeners and if the listeners are still gonna be following us after to wanting so intrigued with the story in bits and pieces to read the full novels when they come out um keep on listening you know but uh so in the novella that i wrote first before everything else she um she gets cursed into, to be turned into a wolf so she's really hating the, the thing or person that turned her into that tore her away from and she wants revenge and she because she was human so she wants revenge and so 
she uses she uses and like I said how she steps on everything and anything and everybody to get where she wants to get back to so she yeah she steps on the walls she steps on the humanity she steps on everybody but I mean I don't know what other viewers might think or I, and that's what I want to embody is to try to write like a, a pure evil character like because like for instance, like Disney's Maleficent, like original movie from nineteen the what the nineteen thirties, nineteen fifties. So like she was pure evil. You had no backstory, what no other. But I know the backstory of a cow. I wanna put that pure evil no even a no backstory, but I want I still want the listeners to feel since you know, like I like for me as the writer, I know she's like, I know she's in love with whoever, you know? This is the reason why she's doing what she's doing. But I don't want to throw that into the story as far. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want her, I want her in a way, this the Maleficent type. And I, and I feel like when Disney did the Maleficent, re, the movies, they... I didn't. I don't think they should have, like, gave her a full fledged backstory. You know that made the pure evilness go away. They made it redeemable, and see how that affects. Cause I feel like if I can, if I could do that, it would be a whole lot to play with. When when I write the like the back and forth between the main villain and the in the uh, main character i could do you know the cause and effects of that you know and i can it'll be a lot to, a lot to play with as far as writing goes yeah everybody who's listening let's start a dialogue tell us what's your favorite werewolf subplot in your show and in, in the show or a novel that you've seen or read and writers who are listening out there how do you write your characters? How do you choose your character names? And how do you write your backstories? What backstories? Let me know. Let's start a dialogue. So if you like this episode and you want to tune in to next time's episode, like, subscribe, and share this episode. Leave your comments and suggestions for future podcasts. I would love to hear from you about that. So my Discovering the Blue Hour audio podcast is now exclusively free, only on discoveringthebluehour.com. If you want even more content take a journey through the website where you can discover all exclusive content pertaining to my work in progress werewolf novel during the blue hour there are short stories important information about the podcast blog posts novel concept videos okay thanks for listening and see you next time